Hey, it's Sebastian for the Metal Gods Meltdown, and I'm joined by Jenny Ann Smith from Avatarium. Congratulations on the new album, Hurricane, Hurricanes and Halos. Thank you very much, thank you. How much of a progression would you say this album is compared to the band's previous albums? Well, I think it's this is a uh, uh, quite big step for us. Um, we, uh, well, we, we knew that we wanted to, to uh, uh, make an album that would complete our live set a bit with some more energy, um, some more rawness and uh, some more straightforward and up-tempo songs and I think we achieved that. It has, the album has a really sort of vibrating energy and uh, well, in my opinion, this is the best um album that we we have or the best record that we have made so far release date isn't that far off are you feeling impatient anxious or excited as it approaches <laughs> uh, oh, at this stage I'm, I'm just excited and you know it's you, you've been living with this music uh, for quite some time now and and it's an it's an odd thing that i mean it, it feels like like uh, you, you, you know, i have this mindset where i, I and sort of think that everyone else must have heard the record too, but of course not. It's it's not released until the twenty sixth of May. So, but it's been so very sort of present in our lives uh, for the, the the last six months. So, yeah. Which is your favorite track from the album today, and why? It's impossible to to pick one because <laughs> I think uh, as as with previous albums, this. Uh, Hurricanes and Halos is is also very dynamic. We are still standing with our feet in our doom roots, but it's it is a bit more colourful than I, I think you're used to hearing us. Uh, so so uh, we have these you know great powerful tracks, and there are also uh, some parts that are quite fragile and, and uh, really emotional. So so it it, it holds. Um, the best of both worlds, I think. What's the response been like so far to the Into the Fire, Into the Storm release from Media and Fans? Well, yeah, it's been it's been um, it's been very good. And actually, today we received a, a ten out of ten from Powerplay in, in the UK. So you can imagine that I, I, we're quite excited and happy about that. That's awesome. Yeah. Why the title Hurricanes and Halos? Uh, well. Uh, so connected to to one of the tracks of the album, which actually is an instrumental track, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Um, uh, we we discussed it or talked about having some some vocals on that one, but decided not to. And uh, so the, the theme re- reflects upon what we have been working with since, uh, both lyrical wise and musical music wise. Uh, you know these big existential questions. Um, Life and death, light and shadow, and, and uh, in this case also um, sort of bad things or the evil, uh, you know, people with with in power seem to do in the name of good. So, so uh, there's a lot of reflection about our current uh, things that that happens both in Sweden and in in uh, societies around us. Yeah, because the video sort of reflects that, doesn't it? And you can sort of like related to what's happening in, in mainland Europe at the moment, you know, with all yeah. the crises yeah. and that. Into the Fire, Into the Storm is epic, and I love the song. But Thank the you. opening track, you could close your eyes and be listening to Deep Purple. Is that a fair comment? Of course, we we, we love Deep Purple. And, uh, uh, but, I mean, we, we are five musicians in the band, and, we you know, we have... Uh, we all have huge ref- sort of libraries, musical uh, references, mu- libraries of, of music that we bring into Avatarium. So, so um, of course, we, we like bands such as uh, Deep Purple or Rainbow or or Led Zeppelin. But and you know, but you can also hear. I think we we from the start we brought our sort of Nordic. Um, you know, folk tradition uh, into the doom, and and I the folk music is still a uh, major inspiration, I would say, and uh, and I think you maybe you could you can also hear our little homage to the Beatles, which also is a huge source of inspiration for us. So 
there are many yeah definitely because again like the sky at the bottom of the sea it reminded me so very much of ronnie james dio's work with rainbow was that in your mind when you first <laughs> recorded that song you know I, I'm, I'm very flattered uh, um when you when you say that and and i've i've uh, i've read and I've, I've been told that i i sometimes sound like him ronnie james dio and of course that is a is a <laughs> that is a great compliment uh, but it's nothing that I do deliberate. I, I guess it, it has to do uh, a lot with my timing. I have this, you know, bluesy, jazzy sort of uh, way to go about music, and, and uh, that probably makes people think about Ronnie James Dio, and and maybe also my intensity and, and my sort of emotional <laughs> intensity. Um, but um, it, it it was not any anything that I, it's not mm, something that I do deliberately it just happens <laughs> it's, it's the way I sound when I you know when I put some energy into my vocals absolutely well I'm not going to give too much away about the songs but I really love Road to Jerusalem as well it's got such a mystical vibe oh, to it it's yeah like really mystical I love it it's brilliant <laughs> yeah that's great we well we we I wrote that track together with Marcus Udell. Uh, so we've written, me and Marcus have written two tracks and Leif Edling has written six tracks on this new record. And Medusa's Child is a nine minute epic. The young girl singing, is she related to any of the band? No, she's not, but she's a friend of mine. She, her name is Edith and she's nine. Right. Uh, so we didn't, <laughs> we didn't know what to expect. No, she, she, uh, she was, we asked her and she was really excited and she came to the studio and uh, so very natural, came so natural for her to sing that that chorus, and so we sang it together and, and tried it out. And I uh, I was a bit uh, uh, you know I wasn't quite sure when we about the idea, but I think it turned out quite magnificent. She really adds a certain a special certain flavor to that song. Yeah, because I'm not sort of a big fan of uh, children singing on metal songs or rock songs, but Evergrey, <laughs> Evergrey, Evergrey did something similar with their last album, and it re worked really well. So yeah, it yeah. Did... <laughs> it's I mean it's delicate. You have to, you really have to uh, find the, sort of the, the um, you know the right way, the very sensitive way to go about it, and. Uh, in this case, I mean the lyric uh, or the, the the music as Medusa's Child is really, you know, it's a very dynamic song, and I I use one sort of vocal technique on the verse, and and when you we come to the chorus, it's a more jazzy or laid back uh, timing, um, where uh, a child's voice really blends naturally. So you have to sort of arrange it uh, in, in a sort of intelligent and well worked through way if i was a total newbie to avatarian which two tracks yeah from hurricanes and halos would you play me to introduce me to the new album i do think into into the fire into the storm is is um is a great song i like that a lot and i like to sing it a lot so i, I think that we, we we made a good choice to to put that out as a first single uh, but it's the same here. It's difficult to choose just two songs. <laughs> I mean, the the strength in Avatarium is really, uh, you know, how dynamic we are together as a band, both on records and live. I mean, we, we move from being super bombastic and powerful and heavy to being very fragile. So it, um, if I were to choose two, thra two tracks that could illustrate that, I would probably choose when breath turns to air because it's really you know it's fragile and it's uh it, it's the topic of the lyric is I mean, it deals with a very serious question uh, and from that to to uh, like a song from, like into the into the fire i think so that's yeah <laughs>
I also think the album artwork is really impressive and would make a great tattoo. Oh would you be getting one? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, I think skin, natural skin is very, very beautiful. I, I, uh, so there wouldn't be any tattoo for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do you have, would you be having that actual album cover framed at your, at your home? Probably. Uh, we've been fortunate to work with Eric Rovampera who's made this, this artwork and he's, um, uh, I think that, um, I mean, th this is the first cover that we have in color, and I'm quite happy about that because the previous ones have been in black and white. And I also think that um, it's great reflection. This album is a bit more colorful than our previous ones. What are your plans tour and festival-wise for 2017? Well, we, we are closing a deal around... Uh, a headline tour in September, so that is what we know at the moment. Um, so we're, we're super excited about it. We, uh, so we, of course, we would like to tour and, and play festivals as much as possible. Um, we did a little sneak preview gig here in Stockholm, and you know, at Soundcheck, we we couldn't stop ourselves from playing uh, the new songs. It was like, you know, we finished with one, we just, you know. Uh, Throw us over the next one, and you know there's a, there's this energy, and we have you know this we have a super strong lineup in, in, in Avatarium with you know great musicians. Um, I'm very fortunate to be able to, to work with the guys Lars Hjell on drums, Mats Rydström on bass, Marcus Idell on guitar, and Erik Nils on organ. I mean, they're I, th I think in my opinion they're sort of Sweden's most interesting musicians and not only do they bring great, great musicianship and craftsmanship and uh, their strong personalities and and uh, and bring brings bring that to avatarium and and i think you can really hear that on the album that it, uh, we've been given creative freedom and uh, we put our own unique mark on on each and uh, all of us have put our uh, unique mark on the album i mean that's a mega compliment because sweden just seems to have so many amazing metal and rock bands it's unbelievable it's just <laughs> it's out of this well uh, we we have um i think many of us have been fortunate to and um, we have we had a, a, a growing up here in, in sweden we have or we had this public music schools that we were able to attend to so <clears throat> Uh, that is maybe one reason that, you know, from early age, the children have been sort of inspired or uh, to, to play music. Um, so, so that maybe that's an, a reason. And we have, as I said, we have a quite strong folk music tradition as well. So there are the roots to, to our musicality. So it's, it's not just the, sort of the hard rock scene. We have, we have it with us. We also have a very strong sort of choir uh, tradition in Sweden that's um, very very many singing in, in various types of um, choirs is there a song you wish you had written and would maybe one day indeed cover it, there are many <laughs> <laughs> there are many but um, oh yo, 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 this is so difficult um, I, I probably both sides with Joni Mitchell I love that song what would you say has been the biggest highlight for you so far in your musical career? There, there has been many, uh, um, and uh, but up to now, I, I would honestly, I would say that making this new album, when I listen to it, I, I feel that I've really grown. I've grown as a musician and as a person. And when I compare these albums to each other, I feel that you know. So <clears throat> for me, it's. Uh, it's very important for me to feel that I'm, I'm you know, contributing, um, and and to, to you know to building and to creating, you know, environments and, and situations where I I can grow and others can grow, and uh, and so so I'm immensely proud of what we've achieved together, and this this album is really a highlight for me. Can you remember the first time you ever played in front of a live audience and how it felt to have people listen to you? <laughs> oh, I, I think I was, I was probably, um, you know, 10 or 11 or something like that. 
I sang a little in a little. We were three girls, and we so we we toured a bit uh, in the lo local region where I grew up. I remember just being terrified and and super anxious and uh, hitting a lot of flat notes. <laughs> so, but you know, in those in, it was great. You know, in those days there were no social medias or or smartphones or anything, so you were allowed to. It was, it was more forgiving. You could make these mistakes in peace and quiet. What would you like Avatarian and yourself to be remembered for in a hundred years' time? Well, the, the quality of the music. I mean, the, the sort of the, and that by that I mean the sort of the both the emotional quality and the sort of the the, um, the competence and, and I mean in the both songwriting and uh, and the performance. But I mean what. What is magical about music, or the greatest thing and the greatest gift, is that you know the, the the emotional connection that you can make through music. So if if in hundred years someone were to listen to Avatarium and, and still feel strongly about you know the information in the music, or or that would be uh, just uh, yeah, unbelievably great. <laughs> Small intimate gig or festival? Both. Vinyl or digital? Uh, vinyl. Ikea or sauna? <laughs> Did you say sauna? Yeah. <laughs> well, it had to be sauna then. Abba or beer? <laughs> it would be Abba, Abba. Okay. okay. Meatballs or kebab? Meatballs. Any Swedish meatballs, of course. Of course. It has to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you have any final words for your fans and our listeners? I feel just immensely proud of what we've achieved and... And, and uh, I hope as many as possible will, will, will get the chance to, to listen to Avatarium. And if you liked our previous albums, I'm, I'm quite sure that you will like this really raw and, and vibrating energy that we deliver on Hurricanes and Halos. And we do hope so much to come to the UK and and, uh, and see some of our, our followers there. Hi, this is Jenny Ann Smith from Avatarium. And you're listening to the Metal Gods Meltdown. Mm -hmm.